This is the Soviet Union, a nation which first stopped the conquering Nazis in their tracks. Huge, unknown to many Americans, a mixture of the very old and the very new, of the familiar and the alien, of the West and the East. This is Red Square in Moscow, where in peacetime the Soviet people celebrated their revolution, where they demonstrated their strength, health, and unity to the outside world. In June 1941, this great isolated nation was treacherously attacked. Overnight, she mobilized. Tanks rumbled through Red Square, blotting out the patterns of peace. The young athletes in full fighting equipment marched off to stop the invader. While Hitler raced through Western Russia, the world wondered, what was happening behind the 2,000-mile front? How were the people of this vast young land standing up to the invasion? The world soon had its answer. The Russian people were facing the war with a calm understanding of what it was about and what they had to do about it. An army of women, 19 million of them, took over the farm work. They planted and harvested the crops, sunflowers, barley, wheat, to keep their armies in the field and their nation from starvation. Men too old to fight joined the land army. Five million children helped to bring in the harvest. Gleaners worked not for themselves, but to add to the vital stocks every last kernel of wheat that could be grown. Factories, blast furnaces, heavy industries were moved to areas of safety behind the Ural Mountains, beyond the reach of enemy bombers and long-range guns. The Russian army took many of the skilled mechanics and trained technicians, but the wheels of war production never stopped. Long before any other country, the Russians saw the value of training young women, older women, and old men for industry. This girl is one of the country's leading engineers, efficient head of a huge plant. In all, 14 million women, half of all the workers of Russia, have taken their places at the workbench. Others are manning the railroads, maintaining and repairing rolling stock, driving munitions trains, keeping open the lines of supply. One woman brought a train load of munitions, 65 cars long, safely through a bombing attack and ahead of schedule. <music> Women pilots fill the non-combatant jobs of ferrying planes from factories to advanced bases and flying the wounded back to hospitals in the interior. Feminine ground crews are common at all airfields. With Hitler's armies almost at the gates of Moscow, the steadfast people went about their war jobs with the same grim determination that made their armies unconquerable. They raked the snow around abandoned factories for shreds of steel, iron shavings, and other metal scraps left as waste before the war. The scrap pile, a familiar sight in any village, town, or city in America, grew here, too, as a monument to war. From such junk as this, new farm tools are made. Abandoned factories are refitted as territory is regained by the Soviet troops. Civilian mobilization was enthusiastic and complete. Rallies held by district leaders resulted in the government bond issue being oversubscribed in two days. Tens of thousands of rubles were donated to aid children suffering from the cruelties of invasion. Contributions came from workers and fighters at the front, from peasants and intellectuals. Flyers at the front turned their pay right back into war bonds. A parcel marked for the Children's Fund, containing 16,140 rubles, was brought to Moscow through the front lines, sent by guerrillas. Farmers and workers in one district alone subscribed 3,150,000 rubles for enough planes to equip a regiment. Like the people of London, the people of Moscow have experienced blitz from the air. The city is shrouded in blackness. Alert units of fast-climbing interceptor planes shoot up from surrounding airdromes. 
every one of the more than four million inhabitants has a job to do or a shelter to go to. Factory worker and professor walk the roofs, sand pail in hand, ready to extinguish incendiary bombs. Moscow's palatial subway is regarded as one of the biggest and safest air raid shelters in the world. An efficient system of artificial ventilation affords complete change of air eight to nine times an hour. In the squares where fruit stands once did business, anti-aircraft guns send up official welcome to Hitler's flyers. Moscow's deadly air defenses had been a perfectly guarded secret. From July 1941 until April 1942, the Nazis hurled 4,000 individual flights against the city. 400 planes, 10% of the total, were knocked out of the sky by Soviet gunners and fighter planes. But through all those months, the bombs dropped. Moscow came to be known as the city that never sleeps. Children played their games in large subterranean gas-proof shelters. Grandmothers chatted, gossiped, and boasted of their own private heroes. For Moscow's secret weapon, was the strength of her people.